so this week we have learned about hypothesis testing in case you have two sample and then how do you find out the or how do you test the claim about the difference of the two population means or if they are paired then how do you do the testing so under different situations we have looked for difference of means then ratio of variances likewise we also did for the difference of the two proportions so we studied the theory part of that and in addition we looked at chi square test of independence and chi square goodness of fit test so now we are going to look at their corresponding codes how we can do them in python so first of all we will look for the test for the difference of the two means such that the two populations the samples that have been taken they are independent and they have equal variances so let me just mention that as a comment test for mu1 minus mu2 in case of independent samples and equal variances so first of all as you know we are going to import the necessary libraries so here we num need numpy we also need scipy's from scipy we can just import stats because we are going to work with lot of statistical functions over here we need to calculate your critical values for the t distribution so here we need it now let us also set the random seed so np dot random dot seed we know the function of this just to ensure reproducibility so we mentioned this it is also coming from your numpy library now let us mention the means and the variance for the two populations because they are coming from normal so let us denote like mean 1 and uh, std1 these are suppose mean 1 is 10 and standard deviation is 2 so basically we are taking the sample from normal distribution with mean 10 and variance 4 likewise for the second one also you can have so here we are taking mean as 8 and standard deviation as 2 so which basically means that we are taking samples from normal populations with equal variances that is 4 okay so now we are going to draw samples from these using np dot random dot normal so we need to draw a sample okay so here mean would be this std1 and the sample size so let me also mention the sample size over here let that be sample size b suppose 20 okay because we are drawing from normal so sample size of 20 is also applicable here obviously you can take increase it and look at the pattern so here you can see that what we have written over here basically we are generating a random sample from normal distribution with mean 1 and variance this is standard deviation so basically we use np dot random dot normal which is a function used for drawing random samples from your normal distribution so we have i believe used it earlier also so similarly you want for the second sample also so here the difference would be coming with just these different means and standard deviations okay so instead of writing std1 and std2 you could have just written std below and uh, separately we could have mentioned as two so in these two places it would have been std only okay so that is also another way of doing it so right now we are just following this pattern now let us set the hypothesized mean value difference of the mean value so let that d not d not be zero so this is your hypothesized mean difference right because you want to check whether the difference between the two means is less than equal to d not versus whether it is greater than d not in case of right tail test and different in different test we will have different 
hypothesis but this d naught let we can keep it as 0 so now let us define the function for the test okay so for this we write df which is used for writing the function so we are defining this is the name of the function write tailed underscore test and these are the inputs so sample 1 sample 2 d naught and and alpha s 0 0.05 so these are the input to your function sorry okay here n1 n2 is the length of sample 1 and length of sample 2 okay so here you can see that these are the parameters of the function so we are going to compare these two samples okay and this is the hypothesized d naught is the hypothesized difference between the means right and alpha obviously you know that this is the level of significance so we are taking it as 0 0.05 in this case so degree of freedom if you remember it is n1 plus n2 minus 2 right so dof can be n1 plus n2 minus 2 and then since we have equal variances it means we are going to deal with your pooled standard deviation so let me write the command for that so np dot square root because it is not the variance so i am just writing the standard deviation so i am right mentioning square root function so np dot square root so here it would be n1 minus 1 n1 minus 1 into sp s1 square right the sample mean sample variance of the first sample so np dot var and here it would be sample 1 comma ddf as 1 because we know that we have to deal with the sample variance okay next same thing would be there for n2 minus 1 because if you know the formula then you can write it easily so here it would be n2 minus 1 and we have to multiply it with the sample variance of the second one okay and finally you have to divide it by ddof that is the total degrees of freedom sorry dof n1 plus n2 minus 2 and one more bracket would be here so finally it means that we need one more bracket at this end okay so the formula is this if you just forget the square root then we have n1 minus 1 right into the sample variance of the first one plus n2 minus 1 into the sample variance of the second one and divided by the total degrees of freedom that is n1 plus n2 minus 2 after dividing, defining this we can also mention the test statistic okay so it is in the numerator what do you have you have x1 bar minus x2 bar minus d naught right that is the hypothesized value and since d naught over here is 0 you can skip it but if you want you can write in the formula also so let me just write it np dot mean for this first sample okay minus np dot mean of the second sample okay minus d naught right so x1 bar minus x2 bar minus d naught whole divided by s pool because you in the denominator you have that sp s suffix p right so s pooled 
into np dot sqrt one over n one plus one over n two. Okay. So we just written the formula only right nothing else so it is x1 bar minus x2 bar minus d0 in the numerator and the denominator you have the pooled standard deviation multiplied by the square root of 1 over n1 plus 1 over n2 okay so let us check the number of brackets if it is correct yeah okay now you can find the critical value so critical value that is would be calculated using stats dot t dot ppf so 1 minus alpha comma dof right so critical value we know that this percent point function is used for this and which is the inverse of your cdf basically right so if you we are mentioning this over here it means that it is going to find the t value that corresponds to this particular cumulative probability. So, if alpha we have taken as 0 0.05, so it means that 1 minus alpha would be 0 0.95 and we are basically looking for a t value in the t distribution such that 95 percent of the values are lying to the left of it, right. So, as I told you that PPF works and looks at the data points from the left end okay so in the theory you might have seen that we have we are comparing the t star value with the critical value at t and suffix alpha is there so since alpha is 0 0.05 in this case so and alpha is the region that is to the right of the critical value however in python when when you are using ppa function so it means that we are looking at what is left or what is to the left of the that particular value critical value so that is why we write 1 minus alpha over here so i discussed it in the last lecture also so return what it will give you it will give you the t star value and it will also compare your t star with the critical value okay this is what we want so this is for your right tail test right because in right tail we do in this way t star if t star we are going to reject the null hypothesis if t star is greater than your t alpha so in the same way we can also define your left tail test so let me mention that define left tailed test so again we would have sample 1 sample 2 d naught and alpha as 0 0.05 and here we want t star and the result of the right tail test So, I will explain you why am I writing like this. So, basically here what we are doing, we are calling this previous function that is the right tail test, but we are reversing the role of sample 1 and sample 2 because this effectively turns the right tail test into the left tail test because you are now testing if the sample mean of the second one is significantly greater than your first sample mean. Right? Because in this case, what do you check? The alternative in left tail test is basically that mu1 minus mu2 is less than d0. So, here if d0 is 0, it means that mu1 is less than or equal to mu2. So, the role of the sample means we are basically reversing that and we are we want it to return minus of this value and the result. Okay. So, negative value, negative of this calculated test statistic would be obtained because here the negation we are doing because the direction of the test is reversed like from left right tail to left tailed. 
so this is one way of doing it likewise you can also define your two tail test again same arguments would be there so if i just copy from here and so sample 1 sample 2 d naught alpha will be 0.05 n1 n2 will be there degree of freedom s pooled will be there t star value critical value here in this case it would be alpha 1 minus alpha by 2 okay and we are going to return sorry return t star and np so we look at the absolute value of this and we compare it with the critical value okay so again alpha is 0 0.05 so it means alpha by 2 will be 0 0.025 so 1 minus alpha by 2 will be 0 0.975 so we are looking for a t value in the t distribution such that 97.5 percent of the values lie to the left of it because in theory what do you have you are going to reject the null hypothesis if absolute value of this t star that is a t star statistic you have calculated is greater than or equal to t alpha by 2 right so alpha by 2 means that to the right of it you will have alpha by 2 region so it is same as saying that 1 minus alpha by 2 would be to the left of it so we have defined these functions now we are going to do the final testing so let me mention for the right tail test so here we need the t star and the result we are calling this function now right tail test sample 1 sample 2 and d naught and it would print sorry here is an extra bracket probably that is why it is coming Finally, it is going to print right tailed test, right tailed test statistic is T star and reject H naught whatever is the result that we have obtained. okay so the right tail test statistic that is critical value that we have found is 3.590 and reject h naught which is true over here so it is giving you a boolean result whether to indi indicate that whether you are going to reject the null hypothesis or not so reject h naught is true it means you are going to reject the null hypothesis that the mean, difference between the two means is so mu1 is greater than mu2 okay so this is for your right tail test likewise you can also compute for other tests so let me reuse this so case 2 will be for your left tail test okay so t star and here we are going to call the left tail test function left tail test statistic so we need the t star and we need this region so left tail test statistic is this and you are again rejecting this null hypothesis okay so that is false so reject h naught is false 
it means that you fail to reject the null hypothesis. Likewise, if you look for the two tail test, so this is your third case. Okay, so here we are going to call your two tail test. So obviously the test statistic remains the same in all the three cases, right? If you remember from the slides also, the difference comes when you are comparing the critical value and your test statistic. So in different cases, so here it is T alpha, other places it is minus T alpha and or you can also have T alpha by 2. So you can see that what are the results. So this is how you can write the code in Python when you want to test whether the difference of the two means is less than some hypothesized mean difference. So here if I am writing D naught as 1, if I change this D naught value, likewise everywhere the calculation would change. So this was your first situation, the test for the difference of the two means, independent sample and equal variances. We know that the second test we considered in your theory was that we, you do not have equal variances. So let me just write unequal variances, which means that we are going to work with your Wells t test, right? So you will be importing your NumPy import numpy as np and from scipy dot stats or maybe just from scipy you just import stats that will cover everything so now let us consider that sample one that you have is generated from np dot random dot normal so we are taking mean as 2, variance as mean, mean as 5, variance as 2, and sample size 20. Likewise, for the second sample, we are taking np dot random dot normal 8, 4, and 20. So d naught is 0 in this case. So now we will first calculate the degrees of freedom because if you can recollect degrees of freedom was a typical thing. Mm, there is a long formula for that. So let me first calculate the degrees of freedom. So N1, N2, let me mention this as the sample size, sample 1 and length of sample 2. Okay. So the degree of freedom in this case so what is the formula for the degree of freedom in the numerator you have s1 square over n1 plus s2 square over n2 whole square and you divide by s1 square over n1 whole square n1 minus 1 plus s2 square over n2 whole square divided by n2 minus 1 so we just have to enter this entire formula over here so let me just mention np dot variance of the first sample okay this divided by n1 okay so here there is one more bracket yeah so same thing we need for the second sample as well and it will be divided by n2 and this whole raised to the power 2 okay now you have to divide it by again np dot where thing So this is sample variance S1 square over this whole raised to the power 2 and this whole will be divided by your N1 minus 1 also.
so it would be sample 2 it would be n2 So this bracket over here, so we want S1 square over N1 whole raised power 2. So this is ending fine. So this and here again. So, so this one will be S2 square over N2. So let me just run this and see if it's working fine. Yeah, so number of the brackets are correct. Good. Okay. Now suppose you want to conduct a right tail test for this. So as I've done earlier, you can do for other tests as well. So because of the time constraint, I will just focus on one of the tests and show you. So in this one, let me take the right tail test because the steps are more or less same only right so define right tailed test as sample 1 sample 2 d naught and alpha point zero five. okay now you calculate your test statistics. So again, in the numerator, what do you have? If you have NP dot mean, that is sam first sample mean, sample one minus NP dot mean, sample two minus D naught, denominator would be np dot square root so np dot where so you have sample variance s1 square np dot So here we are going to divide it by n1 because that is the sample size of the first one. Plus same thing for your second one. Since this entire thing is in square root, okay. So I will add over here. So this one would be sample 2 and here it will be divided by n2 fine so now your t star would be numerator divided by denominator critical value would be again stats dot t dot ppf so 1 minus alpha degrees of freedom that we have already calculated and it is going to return t star value okay and it will check if t star is greater than your critical value yeah so for this let us finally get we want t star and we want the result equal to right tail test here so maybe i could mention unequal so that you can differentiate so unequal this is the function that we are calling and it has to work with sample 1, sample 2 and your D0.
sorry sample 2 so if you want the t star value so let me just print the result what is the result is false that you rejecting you are not going to reject the null hypothesis in this case for the right tail test okay and what is the test statistic that we have obtained here if you want to give a proper print command as we have done earlier you can do it so t star value comes out as like this so maybe the degrees of freedom i can cross check 32.87 so with these values you maybe cross check this because um, here let us hope that these brackets are fine so you can cross check this value once so this is how you do for the unequal variances so this is for your right tail likewise you can write for left tail as we have done just now in the previous situation and uh, you can again do it for the two tail test also now we are going to work with when data is paired all right so that was our third case so we are going to import numpy as np and from scipy import stats okay so data one these things we can take same okay so maybe i could use a different name data one so we are basically drawing two samples from normal distribution with the given mean and variances d naught is zero now we have to suppose do the right tail test again so we have to first define this function this is the name of the function right tail test and these are the arguments so here right tailed paired test okay so here it would be data 1 data 2 d naught and alpha s 0 0.05 okay and n would be the length of your data set because it is paired n1 and n2 is going to be same anyhow now we can calculate the differences because here if this is your xi's and these are your yi's so you calculate the corresponding differences that is di's so xi minus yi so that for that let me mention differences as data 1 minus data 2 okay then you calculate d bar sd right so d bar would be the mean of those differences so let me write mean difference would be np dot mean of these differences and sd would be np dot std okay now you can calculate your t star value so mean underscore differences minus d naught sd underscore differences divided by square root of n right so np dot sqrt of this n so this is your t star value test statistic because it is d bar minus d naught whole divided by sd over root n then the critical value would be calculated critical value here would be calculated using this stats dot t dot ppf percent point function again so 1 minus alpha n minus 1 and it would return the t star value and the result or you could say it checks t star is greater than the critical value or not 
okay once we have defined this function now we can call it finally you will have t star value and the result would be this function that we have defined here we are calling it we want the result of this and the t star value right so let us print what is t star for us it is minus 1.73 and your result is basically false in this case if you want you can also see the critical value so to which we are comparing so this is how you can do the hypothesis testing when the data is paired so likewise you can do for left tail test also the so same steps would be there you can define in the same way just the difference here that the critical value here would change okay minus of that would come and likewise for the two tail test you would write and compare the absolute values with the t alpha by 2 and you can get the results